My mom had me, a nearly adult female, when she was 30. She was single and I never knew my father, but I did find out more info on him two years ago after doing some online digging, and I didn't like what I found. But that's neither here nor there. My mom was not a good mother. She admitted to me in the past she attempted to terminate me, and it failed, and she tried to give me up for adoption, but the couple who planned to adopt me got pregnant just before I was born, so mom was like, screw it, it was too much work to get rid of me so close to my birth. She covered the most basic needs for me and that was that. We didn't spend time together, she hired a babysitter, usually a teenager looking for money to do the day-to-day -day care. She didn't take an interest in my education. She ignored any contact from school. It was up to my babysitter to take me to medical appointments. That's just how she was. She didn't want me. When I was a tween, she met and married a guy. They had a daughter soon after, a son and another daughter. Once she got married, I spent most of my time with friends since my mom didn't want to pay for a babysitter anymore. It worked for me. As a tween, seeing her make a family was painful when she hadn't wanted me. What neither of us ever expected or prepared for was the fact her kids would seek me out and want me. I try to avoid being around them because I don't want to be a jerk, but I don't want to have a relationship with them. But they still look at me like I'm the coolest person they know and try so hard to reach out to me. When mom realized this four-ish months ago and realized how old I am, I think she panicked. She brought me to therapy with her, where she apologized for being a bad mom, admitted she'd been a bad mom, and begged me for a second chance so she could do better for the sake of her three kids, who clearly want me to be their big sister. She said she knows we have no relationship, but she doesn't want me to leave in a few months and break her kids' hearts, and she sees how wrong she is. But I've refused to offer her that chance. I told her she made her choice so many years ago and her kids' best interests are not something I'm worried about. It's just my own life and how I move forward once I'm gone. My mom and her husband, who I guess she told, were both angry. I didn't consider their kids at all because at least she's trying now or whatever. Am I the idiot? Edit, yes, mom had three more kids after 40. She wanted more too. LOL, not the idiot. I'm trying to imagine what the therapist went home thinking. The poker face you got to put on as a professional face with that level of self-centeredness. I know I've treated you like crap, but you can do me a solid and prioritize the kids I actually care about. Screw all the way off with that noise. Oh, to be a therapist and have the mom literally make the paycheck so easy. Yes, I ruined your life and wanted to be rid of you many times, but since the kids like you, can you please forgive me and stay around so they won't be heartbroken? Shocked Pikachu face. What do you mean you don't see the totally reasonable action of giving up your future to be big sis? Honey, she's not sorry. She just realized she won't have a free babysitter when you move out. I hope you told your stepfather what your mother said in therapy. He needs a bloody wake-up call, and although maybe he doesn't care, given he's presumably seen how she treats you and has enabled it, frankly, she deserves nothing from you due to being a neglectful, disgusting human being. If you want, keep the door open with her children by sending birthday and Christmas cards. That doesn't need too much effort, and I'm sure they'd appreciate it. When they're older, you can explain more again if you want to. My wife and I have been married just shy of four years, and she's almost eight months pregnant with our first child. Originally, we were team green, not finding out the gender, so we wanted to have a boy and a girl's name. But my wife got so frustrated that I wasn't happy to just let her use her top choices for names, Peter for a boy and Susan for a girl, and for suggesting the name Everly after my late sister's middle name. She looked at the gender and found out we were having a boy, so we would only focus on boy names. She then decided she would give me a list of her top 10 boy names, and I could choose one from that since I wanted to be involved. I admit this made me angry. When we were dating, she constantly complained that her sister's husband never cared about their children's names, gave no input at all, and about how lazy and lacking he was as a father. I promised her that I'd always want to play a role in that stuff and look for names together. She said that was perfect. I also mentioned how I'd love to use Everly for a future daughter in some way to honor my sister, and she thought it was such a sweet idea. She said she was glad I was that way because she could never marry a guy like her sister's husband or have kids with someone like that. But now that we're in the baby naming stages, she's changed her mind and wants to have full say because she's carrying our child. She was so angry that she said my involvement could be picking from the name she loves most and nothing else. Her list was Peter, Lawrence, Francis, Samson, Vincent, Patrick, Chester, Jeffrey, Stanley and Caleb. I chose Caleb, but she didn't like that and still wanted Peter. We hadn't agreed on a name. I told her I didn't want Peter. 
But then, when we went to her parents' house for a family dinner the other week, she told her family that we had decided to name our son Peter. I was furious because we had not agreed to that. Her family were all so happy, and when we got a moment alone, I accused her of being manipulative and trying to force my hand by making me the bad guy if I kept refusing. I told her she clearly never meant what she said about wanting a man who'd be involved, and she should have found herself a replica of her sister's husband because that's what she really wants. She told me too loudly that I was being a jerk and couldn't change my mind now, so her whole family was angry at me for trying to change Peter. Her sister's husband mocked me for being such a weak man. He said this because of how angry everyone else was at me and because I already took my wife's name in marriage and was now letting her name our kid, which made me angrier at her and made her more angry at me for being angry. Then she told me I had no right to call her manipulative and we've been tense since then. Am I the idiot? Edit, she chose Peter from the Narnia books, same with Susan. They're her childhood favourite characters and she wants to name children after them. So, Narnia was more important to your sister? No, not the idiot. She's got the mindset that she's doing the hard work carrying the baby, she gets to name it, and that's unfair. It's just as much your baby as hers. She wants you involved in naming your son, but only if you agree to the name she chose. What's even more egregious is that you picked a name from her top 10 list, but that still wasn't good enough. Your wife is acting just plain vile. Baby names require the full approval of both parents. Making that announcement in front of the family so you'd either have to roll with it or look like a complete idiot in front of her family was just despicable. Good luck here, as this sounds like just the tip of the iceberg. I strongly suggest that you make marriage counselling mandatory as a condition of continuing your marriage. You must have at least four sessions before the baby is born. You have no idea how much stress a baby puts in a marriage, and yours is already about to crumble into nothing. Disrespect and contempt are love killers, and your wife is showing you absolute contempt. It's loud and clear. I'm very sorry, but you're going to have to stand up, be firm, and be a person worthy of respect because you respect yourself no matter what is thrown at you. My 33 female mother-in-law, 67, lives in another country with her husband. We never got along because she always insisted on making the rules and was very controlling overall. She also disliked me from the start for merely existing. We don't see her very often, thankfully, but whenever we do, it's always pretty stressful. She's visiting us now and staying with us. It's been a week. Normally, my husband deals with her crap, but he's currently traveling for work and won't be back until tonight. Since my husband left, she's been horrible. It's like she's trying to get on my nerves on purpose. I try to keep calm because I know she'll leave in two weeks and I won't see her for months again. However, there's been an incident that my husband and I are now fighting about. My toddler brought a large toy truck to the table. I reminded him, no toys when we're eating. Please put it back in the toy box and you can play with it when you're done eating. My toddler was compliant, but as he was getting off the chair, mother-in-law said, it's okay, honey, grandma allows it. Your mommy is no fun, is she? This is not an isolated incident. She's been trying to undermine my parenting ever since my husband left for work trying to let the kids eat sweets instead of dinner, telling them they could do things I just told them they were not allowed to, and so on. I couldn't take it anymore and said, let's not forget Grandma is but a guest here. Guests don't make the rules, do they? I'm sure Grandma knows who this apartment belongs to, and hotels are so expensive in this area. I admit my tone was mocking, and I was referring to the fact that I alone own our home. I inherited it from Grandpa. She was red and called me disrespectful, but did not escalate it any further. The same evening, my husband called me furious, asking how dare I tell his mother she was not welcome here. I told him the full story, and he was still angry, claiming I should have handled it better and kept the peace. He said he couldn't even leave for a few days without us getting into a fight in front of the kids. I told him, why don't you say that to your mother? I also told him this was the last time I was allowing her to stay over. She can live in a hotel or not come at all, for all I care, if she has to act like this. I refuse to feel so uncomfortable in my own home. I also told him I'm going to my parents' lake house this weekend because the weather is so nice and I want to relax. However, mother-in-law is not welcome to join. He has three options. One, go with us. Two, try to convince the kids to stay home with him and mother-in-law so that I could go alone. Or three, I go with the kids and he stays with mother-in-law. He told me it's very rude not to invite mother-in-law. She would love to go to the lake. I said maybe, but she's the one I need a break from. He called me a petty idiot. I am petty, but I don't think I'm the idiot here. 
Never in my life have I started an argument with mother-in-law first. But just in case, am I the idiot? You should go to the lake alone with no mother-in-law, husband or kids. That woman can be useful and care for the baby she visits every year. Her baby needs a dose of reality that is dealing with his mother and children at the same time without your assistance. Don't forget sunscreen and champagne. Your weekend at the lake could also be for the duration of her visit. No, she should take the kids. If she leaves them with mother-in-law, they will break all the rules the whole time and be unbearable after OP gets home. I'd be most worried about what mother-in-law would say to the kids about OP while she's gone. If mother-in-law is anything like my late grandmother was, she will not hold back in front of these children as soon as OP leaves the house. She's barely holding back now, considering her comment at the table. Take the kids and don't come back when mother-in-law goes home in two weeks. No, throw mother-in-law out and ban her, period. End of story. Hubby got a problem with that? He can join mommy. OP owns the house, no one else. She shouldn't have to keep the peace in her house. OP, you married a mama's boy, so unfortunately you have a husband problem too. My wife of 10 years is very close to her cousin Charlotte. They were raised pretty much as sisters. We spend a lot of time with Charlotte and her husband Paul. Due to a chronic illness, Charlotte can conceive but she wouldn't be able to carry a pregnancy to term. She and Paul have previously discussed using gestational carrier, but it was always in the abstract. I never asked much as I figured it was a very sensitive topic and they tell me what they wanted me to know. My wife never spoke much about it either. The topic was brought up again and Paul mentioned they were finally getting the ball rolling. The next day, my wife sat me down and said she was going to be their carrier. It'd be Charlotte and Paul's baby biologically, she'd just carry it. I was blindsided as it all sounded so definite. I was trying to keep up and ask questions. When did this even become a discussion? That's when my wife told me that 15 years ago, three years before we even met and a long time before Charlotte met Paul, she told Charlotte when she was ready, she'd help her. Now, I understand this is my wife's body and if she wishes to do it, I can't stop her. I just feel so blindsided. I brought up that we have three kids ourselves, jobs, etc. I wanted to discuss this more. At a minimum, this should have come up when we were dating. My wife says Charlotte wasn't sure if she'd ever wanted children, so she didn't bring it up unless it became an issue. I said yes, but clearly this had been in motion for a while, as she's already been approved by the doctor and is ready to start hormones. She continued to treat this as not my problem. I finally put my foot down and said she should have told me about this when dating or when they began the process. I said she's my wife's, not Charlotte's, and I need to be included in these conversations. My wife told me I'm overreacting, and I know now, so that's all that matters. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. This could potentially impact her health and household responsibilities. She's going to need you to help support her through the pregnancy. Also, who's covering all the costs associated with this? Are you going to be expected to cover any of that as well? My goodness, how audacious it is not even to tell you about this arrangement. That is utterly disrespectful. Whose insurance is going to be paying for this baby? Who will pick up the slack when your wife is too far along to do things and postpartum? How will this affect your home, your kids, your marriage, your finances? I would be so angry. This should have been brought up long ago and thoroughly discussed. I wouldn't blame OP if you wanted to separate or even divorce. You are the idiot. She loves her cousin and wants to help. She's had three kids and knows how her body reacts. And so many other commenters are assuming she's having to pay her own medical bills. It's more likely her cousin would pay them. As with most things written here, I can't help but thinking, stop asking the internet, go talk to your partner instead. We've been living together for almost two years. For the last year, we've been living in a house I inherited from my grandmother. It's a three-bedroom, 30-year-old house, and I've put a lot of work into it to make it a home. I tore up all of the original carpet and laid down hardwood floors, redone the kitchen, and I'm starting to redo the bathroom. It's completely paid off, so we pay the insurance, property tax, and utilities. Last week, while we were shopping for cabinets for the bathroom, my girlfriend mentioned selling this house once I finished the bathroom and using the money to buy a new house. I wasn't into the idea initially and became less interested the more she tried to talk me into it. Her reasoning is that no matter how much I fix it up, it's still a 30-year-old house. However, it's in a good location near schools in the highway, so its value is high if I sell it. It's about a 20-minute drive from our work. I want to stay put because I put a lot of work into it and own it outright. I don't like the idea of being stuck to a mortgage. I don't mind that it's old and I don't mind the extra drive. 
She's really been trying to talk me into it. She's even gone to some model homes with her girlfriends. She's bringing home brochures and is mad I won't look at them. She can buy a new house and you can visit her there. Problem solved. Not the idiot. Why on earth should you give up a fully paid off house for something different when you're actively making it home? I guarantee those new builds she's looking at are not built as solidly as OP's 30-year-old house. And those models have all the upgraded and expensive bells and whistles, not the standard fixtures included in the price. Adding in upgraded flooring, cabinets, counters, kitchen and bath fixtures, and any customizations like fireplaces and bump-outs will be a real sticker shocker. Do not, I repeat, do not sell it. You own the damn thing and it sounds like you're happy. You'll regret it, I promise you. Is the problem that she thinks a 30-year-old house is a bad investment or that a 30-year-old house isn't fancy enough for her superficial tastes? It sounds like the latter to me, the kind of woman I would get away from as quickly as possible, down to earth or not in my life.